the Feast of Ascension is one of the most important feasts of the entire liturgical year. The Ascension marks the beginning of a new time when the Apostles have to live in the absence of the Jesus they knew. They are left with a mandate to complete the mission of Jesus in the world. We could compare the Feast of the Ascension to the passing of a baton from one runner to another in a relay race. On this day, Jesus passed the baton of continuing his work on earth to his followers. The way we complete that work is by witnessing to our faith. I wonder if you have heard the real love story of Prince Sao Kya Seng from Burma and Inge Sargent from Austria. In the 1950s, Sang went to the United States to study agriculture. Since he wanted to experience what it was like to be a student in the United States, he kept his identity secret. Not even his professors knew who he really was. One of his fellow students was Inge Sargent. Inge was from Austria. Since both of them were exchange students, Inge and the prince quickly found that they had a lot in common. They started to spend more and more time together. Their friendship eventually grew into love. The prince decided that he would not tell Inge who he really was, even though their relationship was beginning to get deeper. He didn't want her to love him because of his title, but for himself alone. Even when they got engaged, he did not disclose his secret. Even on their wedding day in the United States, he did not reveal his true identity. However, on their honeymoon, they took a ship to Burma to see his family. As their ship docked in his native land, hundreds of people were waiting at the harbor. Many of them were holding up welcome signs. A band was playing. People were tossing flowers at the ship. Surprised at all this excitement, Inge turned to her husband and asked, Whose arrival are these people celebrating? The prince turned to his bride and said, Inge, these people are celebrating our arrival. You are now the princess. Suddenly, Inge saw her husband in a new way. In the Gospel of Mark, we hear about how the disciples discovered who Jesus really was. He had been their teacher and their friend. They had seen him do marvelous things like feeding the 5,000, healing the leper, even raising the dead. But they also witnessed the crowds turn against him and they saw him crucified. But then, on the third day, he rose from the dead and he made appearances to them over a period of 40 days. And now, as he was saying goodbye to them, they see him in a whole new light. Who was this man who had walked among them? No ordinary man to be sure. Foretold by the prophets, risen from the grave, ascended into heaven. Surely, he is who he said he was, the Son of the Most High God. Ascension Day tells us three things. It tells us who Jesus is. Secondly, it tells us what we are to do. And thirdly, it tells us where the power comes from for living as Christ would want us to live. Let's deal first of all with who Jesus is. We say it well every Sunday in the Apostles' Creed. We say we believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He shall come to judge the living and the dead. That is what we believe. Jesus is our Savior, our Master, our Lord. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. 
there is no one above him in his presence one day every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Christ is Lord all this was confirmed in the event of the ascension no wonder the disciples were filled with joy and worshiped him and stayed continually at the temple praising God they now knew without any more doubt they had been in the presence of the son of god there is a story told about three young englishmen who in april 1848 found themselves in paris during the revolution which overthrew king louis philip one of them kept a diary of their trip there is one entry describing the ransacking of the palace of the tuileries by a mob everything was being smashed when suddenly the mob reached the chapel broke in the doors and found themselves confronting a huge painting of the crucified christ behind the altar someone called out take your hats off hats were taken off and most of the crowd knelt down and the picture was carried out to a neighboring church in the most utter silence they walked to the church in pin drop silence as the disciples stood there on the day of Christ ascension into heaven you could also probably hear a pin drop there was no questioning his identity the ascension of Christ settles forever the question of who Christ is now let's deal with what we are to do In his last moments with his disciples just before he ascended he gave his disciples their marching orders This is what is written The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem You are witnesses of these things His last instructions to them was that they were to be witnesses to all they had seen in 1985 a wonderful movie was released titled shoah shoah was not the kind of movie most of us would enjoy for one thing it lasts more than 9 hours it took 11 years to make and it contains eyewitnesses testimonies to the tragedy of the holocaust There were interviews in the movie with Nazis, survivors and bystanders. One person interviewed was Philip Müller, a Jew who watched other Jews walk into a gas chamber to die. Mr. Müller felt that he had no reason to go on living. So he went inside the gas chamber with them. However, a small group of women came over to him and one woman said, So you want to die but that's senseless your death won't give us back our lives that's no way you must get out of here alive you must bear witness to our suffering and to the injustice done to us in his review of this movie film critic Roger Ebert writes and that is the final message of this extraordinary film it is not a documentary not journalism not propaganda not political it is an act of witness in it we celebrate the priceless gift that sets man apart from animals and makes us human and gives us hope the ability for one generation to tell the next what it has learned ever is right that is our responsibility to tell the next generation what we have learned shoa witnesses to something horrendous the senseless death of 6 million people the disciples of jesus were to witness to something unbelievably wonderful one person had died for all people god's son had walked among us god's son had died for us they could not wait to tell the story and Christians have been telling that story for 2000 years 
Now it is our turn. Will we do our part? We see one thing more. Where does the power come from for living as followers of Jesus Christ? Jesus tells, you are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Where does our power come from? Our power comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the gift that God has promised us. A newspaper ran a story sometime back about a virus that had infected a flock of Canadian geese. The virus destroyed their navigation system. These geese flew in circles, became disoriented and got lost. Can you believe that? Canadian geese getting lost? It was devastating for the flock. Thousands of geese died. What an incredible consequence because of a loss of ability to navigate. Many people today are as clueless about their lives and the direction they should go as these geese. We are missing out on a great resource for our lives if we do not pray daily for the gift of God's Spirit. Each of us is a part of the church. Each of us has a different role to play in the power of the Holy Spirit. Without the navigation of the Holy Spirit, the community dies. And with it, we have the power to complete the mission of Christ in the world. May Jesus Christ be praised.